So today we're going to work on exercise 113, which um, will cause us to shift from working in InDesign into working in Adobe Illustrator. So I know that this class moves quickly and that suddenly, you know, we were just doing InDesign and now we're doing Illustrator and we almost have completely forgot about Photoshop. That's just the nature of the way things go. And we will come back to all of these. We'll go from Illustrator into AutoCAD for a while and then we'll come back into Illustrator. So it will, it will snowball on itself, certainly. Um, the truth is that Illustrator is shockingly close to InDesign. All the tools that we're going to learn today, the pen tool, um, will be available in the world of InDesign just like it is in Illustrator, though we're actually going to jump to Illustrator to learn the pen tool, but it's still available in InDesign. So today we're going to work on designing and creating our own font, and I'm, I'm really doing that not because the end product of the font is so spectacular. It's more you just need to practice with the pen tool, and there's no way around practice to get good at it. And there's going to come a point in time where we're doing our logos uh, or when we do architectural diagramming where we just need the pen tool, and we need to be fluid, and we need to make it look like we know what we're doing. And the only way, real way to get there is to practice. So today we're going to spend all day practicing, and then next Monday we're going to spend all day practicing. So it's a lot of practicing, and it's a lot of uh, very uninspiring, not exciting work to be doing. But at the same time, the only way you're ever going to get good at it is if you spend the time. Better to spend the time now than to panic later on when you can't do what you really want to do. Uh, I do also, you guys turned in your lecture series posters. Thank you for that. I do have grades to hand back, so I'll come around after lecture, and I'll, I'll give you all your grade sheets back. Um, if there's a hole in it, let's talk about it. Let's figure out what happened. A few people forgot to categorize their assignment 102s correctly. Um, and so it's not going to be something where I'm going to penalize you. My guess is that you submitted it anyway. Uh, but I want to kind of reinforce that you have to categorize it correctly because that's how I'm going to see it. Um, so if you miscategorized it, no worries. But go back and recategorize it correctly so that we can make sure that that's graded um, and that you can you know, have a, an accurate grade. So today, for exercise 113, I've gone ahead and I've pulled it up on the Digital Tools site here. And I had some, some issues this morning. And I guess I should probably warn you ahead of time. It seems to have corrected itself a bit. But I started off today, and it was just one of those days where absolutely nothing could go right. And every time I touched somebody's computer or tried to tell them what to do, it broke. <laughs> so it was just one of those days. And so fair warning, it may happen to you. But I hope that we've broken through that. And I, I won't have the bad touch that I had this morning. Um, anyway, so there is, at the bottom of the download section, an Illustrator template for exercise 113. We're going to want to save that. So I'm going to click on Save Link As. And I'm going to save it into today's folder on my uh, flash drive. And I'll go ahead and click Save. Once it's done, I can actually just open it straight away. And that will open up Adobe Illustrator uh, CS6. So this, um, unfortunately, on the, on the screen, you can't see any of the letters in the background. So I'm going to do a couple things really quick to, uh, to make those show up a little bit better. So bear with me for just a second while I do that. what I want not here. Ah, it's floating. There we go. Can you see the note? Yeah, you can see the letters now. OK, sorry about that. So let's start uh, by talking our way through the workspace in Adobe Illustrator. It should look basically the same as InDesign. Um, there's very, very few differences. And a lot of the commands are the same. Uh, a lot of the things that you can do are the same. In fact, you could do layouts in Illustrator just like you can do them in InDesign. One of the big differences has to do with multi-page layouts versus single-page layouts. Um, next, next class, I'll spend a little bit more time really identifying what is good to do in Photoshop, what is good to do in InDesign, and what is good to do in Illustrator. So you can start to sort out why you should be using one over the other. Uh, I think that'll help uh, in the clarity here. But for the meantime, we're going to go through Adobe Illustrator and kind of uh, talk through it. 
The top bar here is our normal menu structure. It doesn't look any different than um, InDesign. There's a few things that are different. There's an effect menu, and we'll talk through that a little bit later on in the semester. Below the menu structure, we do have our ribbon that changes contextually aware based on whatever tool we have selected. We'll get different options. So for example, if I pick the type tool, I'm going to get different options. If I pick the width tool, I'll get different options. So those are going to change based on what's selected. Down the left side of the page, I have my tools. Uh, these are very similar, though there's a few more tools than are available in, in InDesign. Uh, some of which are the same. The pen tool, the fifth one down, that's what we're going to be using extensively today. Um, at the bottom of this column, I have a fill color and a stroke color, much like I had um, in, in InDesign. The color swatches are a little bit bigger, which is nice, so we can see them a little bit better. Uh, but they are there as well. On the right side, I have a variety of um, pop-out windows. So for example, the stroke window. One of the things to point out is that by default, and this may be the case on your machines when you, when you first start them up, uh, if I were to click on the stroke menu, for example, I get a very limited set of options. All I get is the stroke weight. If I want to see more options, there's a little button here at the very corner of this window that looks like a downward facing triangle with four lines next to it. That icon, if I click on it, will let me show options, which gives me the full drawer of all the options. And so sometimes by default, you only get a little tiny. So here in the color window, for example, I only get a little bit of information. If I click on show options, I get much more information. Um, so it's just worth it to point out that, that you can always expand how much information you have. I Just like in InDesign, I have workspaces. Right now it's set to essentials, but if I were to click on that, I can get typography, for example. That looks familiar. I can get layout. Um, and then they have some other workspaces that are different than what I've, uh, what I've seen in InDesign, like painting, for example, uh, et cetera. We're going to leave it on essentials for right now. That gives us the bulk of what we need for what we're doing today. So now we move into the actual document that we're going to be creating today. Today, we're going to concentrate on the capital letters um, and a few of the symbols. Uh, hopefully, you'll get to those. And then next class, we'll do the lowercase letters. This is not um, the sort of thing where you'll be penalized if you don't make it to all the letters. It's just a matter of learning and practicing. So if today, if you're really picking up on the pen tool quickly and you want to do both pages, then you're going to have much more freedom next class to work on something else. If today you need more time to work on your Mondrian Museum or, uh, excuse me, your uh, Villa Savoie model that you're all working on right now feverishly, um, maybe defer a little bit of the work that you're trying to do to next class. Okay. So the, the point being that you need to practice. No matter how you do it, you need to practice. And you're going to have to put in the time at some point. Um, and so this, this template that we're looking at here, I've, I've set up with some guidelines for you to, to work with. But we're going to do this from a, a website. It's called paintfont.com. Um, it's originally designed for you to be able to print it out and then write out your handwriting and then make a font of your handwriting. Uh, I'll be honest, it's not the best website, but it is free and it does a reasonable job. Um, and so while you're going to spend lots and lots of time getting all the intricate details of your font down, uh, the final end result may or may not be exactly what you're after. But again, this is about the, the practice more than it is about the final result. So we're going to open up the layers. And hopefully you see it on the right-hand side here. It's like two squares. If you don't see that little layers um, menu, you can get to it by going to Window and then checking Layers, and it'll come up. And when I have the layers on here, um, this looks very much like the layers do in InDesign. So it should look familiar to you, at least. Layers in Illustrator and layers in, Illus in InDesign work the same way in that I can have a layer. Layers that are on top of other layers contain objects that are on top of other objects. But within any one of these layers, I can have multiple objects. So unlike Photoshop, where it's one object per layer, this is actually uh, multiple objects per, per layer. I can choose to show or hide any individual layer by clicking on the little I next to the layer name. I can also choose to lock and unlock any layer by clicking the lock icon next to the name. So in this particular context, page one is viewable. I really would like it to be locked so that I can't accidentally select it. The guides, I can turn on and turn off. And they're available on the guides layer. Uh, and I set those up as a locked layer as well. 
And then font page one, this is the layer that I'm actually going to do my work on today. Uh, and because the screen doesn't show up the green particularly well, I'm actually going to change my color. Um, let's see if they, it'll let me in here. There we go. I'm going to change from green to brick red just so that you guys can see what I'm doing on the screen. You don't have to change it. You'll be able to see green on your screens just fine. It's just the way the projector kind of works in this context. So when we move on to the next set of letters for, for later on, um, I'll be turning on this upper set of layers. So I'll turn on page two, guides page two, and font page two. And then I'll be working on font page two as my active layer. Okay. So for right now, I'm going to leave all of those off. And I'm going to concentrate on just uh, the letters that are on this, la this um, page. I do want to make sure that I'm on the font page one layer so that it's highlighted in this lightish blue color. And then I can go ahead and minimize the layers back over into their little side icon. So now let's take a look at the first letter. I'm going to start with the capital letters first uh, and then move on to the symbols if I have time. Let me go ahead and zoom in on my letters here. And like I said, I darkened up the letters a bit so that we can see what letter goes in what space. Uh, the truth is we don't want these too dark because we don't want them to conflict when we end up converting our font. But if you're having trouble seeing the letters on your particular screen, just let me know and I'll come around and help you uh, see them a little bit better um, because they're obviously deliberately light. OK, so the whole purpose today is to work with the pen tool, which is the icon that's, the, that's five icons down on, the, on our basic toolbar here. And if I click on it, it looks like one of those old-fashioned kind of ink fountain pen things. Um, and so if I click on that, I'm going to be able to draw a shape. Now the problem is, if I start to draw a shape right now, if I look at my fill color and my stroke color, I have no line color, but I have a fill color. So if I were to draw a shape, let's say I would start to draw the A, it's just going to fill it in as a black triangle, which is not what I was after. So before I start drawing anything, go ahead and get rid of that, I'm going to come down here and I'm actually going to flip the fill color and the stroke color. And there's a little arrow that'll let me swap the two. And now I have a line color or a stroke color and no fill, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so the red slash is through the fill, and the, uh, the, the outline color here is black. So once I have that, I'm going to start creating the A. And doing straight line segments is relatively easy uh, in the world of the pen tool. Uh, basically, I'm going to click where I want to start the letter A. I'm going to click at the point at the top of the A. And I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to click at the bottom of the A to create basically the, the shape of the A. After I've done that, if I go back up here and I try to click again, right? Oh, sorry, it's going to do this, where it's going to continue my line. I don't want that to happen. So one of the things that I end up having to do is I have to toggle back to the uh, selection tool, click off my line, come back to the pen tool, and then I can draw the line that goes across. So I can draw from there to there, for example, for the bottom of the A. Now, I recognize that that's a little bit annoying. There is a shortcut on the keyboard for how you do this. I'm not personally going to do any of the shortcuts on the keyboard because I want to emphasize what tool I'm using. But the pen tool is P, and the arrow tool is V. So I can very quickly toggle between the pen tool and the arrow tool and then back to the pen tool. It right? makes life a little bit easier. So the A is relatively easy. When we look and kind of um, evaluate what's going on on this letter A, we can see that there's some control points that define this A. There's a point at the bottom here. There's a point right there. Let me turn off the guides for just a second to hopefully make this a little clearer. There's a point right here at the top of the A, and there's a point right here at the bottom of the A. Okay. If instead of picking the black arrow, which is the selection tool, if I pick the white arrow, which is the direct selection tool, I can click on any one of these points and I can manipulate that point. If I wanted the A to be taller, for example, I can drag it taller. If I wanted the A to be shorter, I can drag it to be shorter. Okay, So I have flexibility with the individual control points. I can also, having clicked on one of these points, change what the corner 
of that point looks like. So right now it's a very sharp corner. Okay. If remember, if I don't see all of these options, I click on show options and I'll see this. And we can look here for an option of corner and I can, for example, round over the corner. So let's zoom in a little bit and you can see that that rounds over. I could also choose to bevel the corner so it clips the corner flat. Or I could go back to my angled corner. I can also down here at the bottom, I could change from the, the, the angled corner to be a round corner. Or I could project, it's essentially the same thing as being clipped, but I can project it to be a little bit longer than my point. Okay, so I have flexibility there in, in what's happening on my various control points. Okay, so let's move over. I'm going to press Control minus to zoom out a little bit. And let's look at the letter B. So the letter B essentially has a straight line at the back. So I'll go ahead and draw my straight line. If I'm struggling with creating a straight line, notice that when I try to get close to it, I'll get a green line that's kind of perpendicular. That's helping me draw a straight line. If I want to ensure that I draw a straight line, I can also hold down Shift, which no matter where I put my mouse will, will, will make sure that I have a straight line. Okay, So I have that, and we'll start there. And again, I'll click off, deselect everything, and come back to the pen tool. Now, I want to continue from this point going out to draw the first top segment here. And so when I move, when I have the pen tool active, when I move it close, see how the pen tool, the little icon next to it, changes from a star to a slash? That means I'm going to continue from that point. So I'll click right there to continue from that point. I'll come over kind of a straight amount here. Now I've created that. And the next piece is I want to create the curved arc. And thus far, everything we've done has wound up being straight segments. You know, so I could draw the B, for example, like this, and come back, and that would be the B. Okay? I don't want to do that. I want to have an arcing segment. So what I'm going to do is instead of just clicking, I'm going to click and hold with my left mouse button. And as I do that, I'm going to drag out a tangent line to my arc. And the length of the tangent line is going to control what that arc looks like. And so I'll have to find what is the right feel for this. Maybe it's like that. And that then creates a nice smooth arc to that point. I'll continue by just clicking down here so that I have a smooth arc that comes back to this point. And then I'll come across straight. And I'll make that part of the line segment as well. Let me hold down Shift so that it's for sure straight, like that. So now this ended up turning out rather ugly. Okay, This is the nature of the pen tool until you get used to, to, to working with it. And that is that this tangent line isn't in the center of these two points. If, however, I click on it with the white arrow, the direct selection tool, I can manipulate where that point is. I could raise it up, for example. And then I could adjust the tangency so that it's not as big. And I can end up having a nice smooth arc that goes through those points. It does take some manipulation and some practice to find out what the right amount is. Okay? So I've done that. I also want to come over and select this endpoint and drag it over till it goes on top of the line at the back of the, the shape. So now I'll come back to the pen tool and I'll proceed with the bottom. So again, I'll click on that last point when I get the little slash. I'll come straight across. I'll click and hold and drag to create my tangency line here. And I'll finish with a single point. I'll go back to my direct select, my arrow. And I'll move this point so that it lines up with that point. And then I'll come back and I'll adjust these tangency lines until they feel right. So about there is probably pretty good. And that's pretty good as well. Okay, this may be a little bit long, so I'll pull this back a bit. And we can now see that I have the, the B created. So let's move on to the letter C. Okay, and some letters are going to be harder than other letters. 
right? An S, for example, is going to be probably be the hardest letter that you're going to try to do. OK, so let's look at a C. Now I could come to the pen tool. And one of the challenges with learning the pen tool is learning where the tangency points should be. So if I started with the C, say, here, and I made my next point at the top, and I dragged my tangency line there, and I made my next point about halfway down the side, and I made my next point down here at the bottom, and I made my next point right there to finish off the C. Right? And I looked at it. That's not too bad. Right? I could certainly manipulate it. I could adjust these points using the direct select tool and, adju and adjust the tangencies such that it, it might look OK. okay? It's not bad. Now, if instead of picking those just a few points of tangency, if instead I said, OK, well, I'm going to start here, and then I'll control the tangency here and here, and maybe there, and maybe here, and maybe here, and then maybe here. Right? If we look at the C, it's kind of lumpy. And it would take a lot of manipulation afterward to kind of correct these errors. Like, oh, that one's not quite in the right spot. This one's not quite in the right spot. Let's move that one over. And so you'd be fiddling with it for a long period of time. Okay? So to me, this is a little bit hard because there's too many control points. And it's really hard to get this kind of symmetrical. Well, the truth is that the letter C is very close to an O, and an O is very close to a circle. So let's, instead of using the pen tool to create the basis, let's use one of my shape tools. And so I have the rectangle tool, but underneath it, I have something called the ellipse tool. And if I use the ellipse tool, I can create a perfect ellipse that's nice and smooth all the way around. So this is a good starting place to creating my C. Right? Instead of having to, to create this from scratch, I'm just going to use the circle. But now we start to, talk, to think about, well, I have to break this letter or this circle about here and about there. So how do I create kind of a trim? How do I, how do, I do this? So I can do that by using a tool that's hidden underneath the pen tool, and that is to add anchor points. And so it's the pen tool with a little plus next to it. And so when I move over and I click, I added, you can see the little point show up there. I added an anchor point. I can add another anchor point down here at the bottom. So that anchor point and that anchor point are now going to be where I'm going to cut open my C. So now that those two exist, I'm going to select with the direct select tool the point in between the two. So not this point, not that point, but the point that is in between the two that's connected to the two line segments. And I'll go ahead and press delete. And that then opens up the C. So this is a lot easier to create a nice symmetrical C than to try to draw it from scratch. If I come over to the D, it's essentially like doing a B. So we'll go back to the pen tool. We'll create the vertical line first. And I can either go up from the bottom or I can go down from the top. Since I'm already here at the bottom, we'll go over one tangency point right there in the middle, back up to the top, and then right across to there. If I don't like what it looks like, remember I can come back with the direct select select my point, and adjust the tangency line. The good news is once you've created it, I can adjust the two sides independently of each other. So if my center point isn't quite, if it's a little low, for example, right, I can have an adjustment for this side, and I can also have a different adjustment for this side. So let's pull that back down a little bit more. Maybe like that. Okay. Let's say that's the D that I wanted. So if we move on, E and F, pretty easy, straight line segments. We don't have to worry about it. The one thing to note is that if I had a line segment denoting this E, I'm not going to be able to connect this point as part of the E as well. Right? I can draw the line segment, but these will main this, this is one line segment, and this is another line segment. So I can't can't have those connect. I can't t-join an intersection. OK, so there's, there's the E. Maybe I'll lower this down a little bit. We'll style it a bit. So we'll, we'll skip F for right now. Let me go to G. 
So G, once again, looks an awful lot like a circle, looks an awful lot like a C. So I'll start with the oval tool, and I'll drag and create my circle. Now, just because the background looks a certain way doesn't mean I have to mimic what the background looks like. I can make the G look however I want. If I wanted the G to be very tall and skinny, I could do a tall and skinny G. Okay, it's entirely up to you. So I have this. Once again, I need to add anchor points at the places where I want this to be split. So we'll add an anchor point there, and we'll add an anchor point maybe there. I'll go back to the direct select tool, select the point in between there, and I'll press delete, and it'll go away. Now I'll come back with the regular pen tool, go over my line segment, and I'll go straight up, and then over. I might want to hold down shift when I do this next segment there. And now I've created the G. So once you've gone through and you've worked with the letters themselves and you've created the letter forms and, and practiced with the pen tool and kind of manipulating these lines, we have some other options relating to these lines. So I already showed you how to adjust whether the, um, the corners were angled or beveled. So for example, I could bevel the corners if I wanted to, uh, or I could angle or round the corners. Um, but I also have some other things that I can do. First thing is I can change the weight so I can thicken up the line by just adding to the weight to make a different look. I can also type in a value. I'm not stuck. But if I come down here a little bit further, there's something called a profile. It's at the very bottom of this menu. And what a profile is, is there's pre preset widths that are set up as a profile. So if I click this width profile 1, for example, it's going to start skinny here. It's going to get fat in the middle, and it's going to get skinny at the end. So let's go ahead and click on that. So my G now starts thin, gets thicker as it goes along, and then gets thinner. If I didn't like that profile, I could change to a different profile. This one, for example, starts thin, gets thick, gets thin, gets thick again, and then goes back to thin. I could select a profile like this which gets thin at either end, but stays thick throughout the middle, kind of uniformly thick. I could do this, which is thick to thin in a kind of more of a taper. I could do this, where it is even on the inside, or excuse me, I think in this case it's on the outside, and the thickness goes toward the inside. There's also the ability to flip there. So now it's, it's straight along the inside, and it gets fatter along the outside. Okay. Now, if I don't like any of these profiles, I can also go back to Uniform, and I can select over here on the left column, there's a tool called the Width tool. Shift plus W will get you to that tool. And when I have the Width tool active, I can pick any point along this line, and I can click and drag to make the line, say, thicker. I can click and drag. In this point, it's an existing point, and I can make the line thinner. Oops, sorry, I clicked twice. Try that one more time. Here we go. And I can make that come down. I can adjust the point here and make that come down as well. So I have a lot of flexibility in what my profile, and notice that the profile is now a custom profile that corresponds to whatever I've done with the width tool. Okay, so I have a lot of flexibility in what I'm going to make these look like, just with the width tool. If I'm unhappy with what I ended up creating, I can click on this little arrow again and go back to uniform. We can drop down the size, and I can start again. Okay, So it's not a permanent change. It's just something that you can work with. Okay? So what you're going to concentrate on today is creating all the letters. H is relatively easy. I is J, K, L, M, et cetera. Let's find S. Okay, so S is a particularly hard one. It's probably the hardest letter that you'll do today. The ampersand is the and sign, uh, or ampersand is also a very difficult one. Um, so that'll test your pen ability. Some of this is where you place your control points. So if I were drawing the S, I'd start my control point right about there. I'd do one control point at the top. i do one control point along the side, 
I do one control point in the middle of my S. I do one control point here at the bottom of my S, or excuse me, at the side of the lower portion of the S. I do one at the very bottom. And I do one at the end. Okay. So I did fairly well in these upper portions, but I really didn't do a great job at the end. So this needs to end up being a little bit longer to round out. And that's not unreasonable. Okay, You're going to take some practice, and you're going to get the S to look however you want. Uh, some people do try to form it with a series of circles, which is certainly a, a viable option. So say something like this, and something like that. And then they're going to add some control points. Let me add a control point right here, add a control point right there. That can end there. This one needs to be right there. And then we'll delete some of these extra segments. We'll get rid of this. We'll get rid of that. Get rid of this. And then I'll come back with the pen tool and connect this point to that point. And that S may be a reasonable S. Okay, so it's another way of forming up the S. Now, in this particular example, if we look at this corner right here, see right there, it kind of comes in as a nice sweep and then it angles, it's sharp. If I select the point right there, I can come up here to my ribbon and I can convert from an angled point to a smooth point. And if I click on the smooth point here, it'll smooth out that transition. Likewise, I could pick this point, and I could smooth that part of the transition. And that then makes this look much better as I go through the S. Okay? I can also come back to any point, say this point, and I can convert to angular. So if I want those two to meet at a point, I can do that as well. That may not be the desirable effect on the S, but it's certainly something that I can do. Let me back up a couple steps. There we go. Sometimes you have two line segments, like this and like this, for example, that are close. And you'd really like those two to come together. Or you have this line segment, and it's on top of this line segment, but they don't meet at a nice corner. Okay? If that's the case, I can use the Direct Select tool. I can drag a box around both corner points. And I can come up here under Anchors, and you see how there's a dot uh, and a dot, and there's a dotted line between them? If I click on that button, it will then join the two points together and give me a strong corner. Okay, And then I can control what that corner looks like. Sorry. Right here, it could be rounded or beveled. But they're now acting as one unit. So I can join those two by selecting the two endpoints. The other thing I can do is if I select two joined endpoints together, I can break them by using the little the two dots and the scissors so that they become two separate points where I can then select a given point and I can then move that particular point. So that's a way of breaking a line segment. And this doesn't have to happen with just two straight line segments. I could actually come back here to my S. I could select that and I could break those two. And I could then control them independent of one another. Oops, sorry, wrong, wrong thing here. And I can control those independent of each other. Okay, so today is very much about practicing and learning and, and kind of working through this. One of the best ways of learning the pen tool is to have to go through a bunch of complex shapes. And so the letters are, are great. Those of you that took 130 know that you learned an awful lot when trying to do the lettering. Um, just in terms of letter forms and shapes and how to draw. So the same thing, same thing applies here. So capital letters first, then you can move into the numbers and or the special punctuation. If you don't finish this completely, that's perfectly okay. Uh, we're going to do the rest of this plus the lowercase letters next class. When you're done, make sure you do file, save for web. And we'll save this as a PNG 24, that's fine. And we'll go ahead and click save. You should have your letters but also the background showing. All right, that's the expectation. We'll talk next class about actually converting it into a font and using the website and, and then using the font. So we'll take it all the way through. 
Uh, but today, it's just about practice. Are there any questions? Sure. So let's do a C again. How about how about if instead I do? Well, we'll do a C again. All right. So let's get rid of the C. And do you want me to do it from a circle, or do you want me to do it as if I were just drawing it? From a circle. All right. So I'll go ahead and use the oval tool, which is available underneath the rectangle tool. Tool. And I'm going to go ahead and draw my oval, starting at one corner and going to the other corner. So maybe it looks something like that. This shape has four, corner, four um, control points, two, three, and four. I want to add two more at the places where I want it to start and end. So one is about there, and one is about there. I'll go to the pen tool. Underneath it is the add anchor point tool. And from there, I can establish there's a point, and there's a point. Then I'll use my direct select, my white arrow, and I'll click the point that is in between the two. So it's this point right here. And then I can just press delete on the keyboard, and I'll now have that cut into a, a C shape. Are there any other questions? Did, OK, so the guides, I, I actually ended up turning them off so they wouldn't confuse you as much. I can turn them back on, and they're there. Um, the, these are kind of a turquoise color. If I want to change those, I think I have to go to, uh, it's probably under Preferences. Go to Edit, Preferences, Guides and Grid. And there I can change the color, say, to light red, for example. And maybe you can see them a little bit better. If, the, if I wanted to change the layer color, if you're working on the green layer and it's too yeah. difficult to see, I'm going to double click on the layer itself. And then I can change the color of the layer. So it was green, and I just changed it to a darker color, a, a, you know, a burgundy or a brick red or something like that. And then those lines are going to be in a darker color for you. Okay, so they're two different things. Other questions? No? All right. I'll turn you loose.